uh, the Strokes and uh, last night. Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we, from uh, um, Johnny Mango. Oh, yeah, Johnny thing. Mango, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, old, 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 old the Mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Adge Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah, was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Uh, apples and jams. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, I wonder, is that true? I hope, I, hope, I hope JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope the Mango Boy's not having yeah. a laugh at me. Is that true? Jo uh, one of the Wurzels died by tractor. <laughs> Did he? D is, is that true? So give us a call. What's is the number know? again, Carl? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If so, I'm I'm sorry that I disrespected them. I didn't I didn't know. Could you imagine? Oh God. If, right, say if like you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. -hmm. And you c you kill someone, you go, oh God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look, and it's someone famous. Yeah, or Adge Cutler. <laughs> 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 yeah, go on. What was your point? No, it's just like not Terrifying, only yeah. it's like you've killed someone, then you look. But I mean, all, yeah, I know what you mean. Actually. What that makes is, it even worse? And what, what makes it even worse? They were rich. Yeah. Oh, no. But be... say if it was someone who's like really big in the world. No, that is a good, I quite like that. It's an interesting point, though. Oh, that's your bag. No wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well... As Bono said. Did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm There's just... A, is that under there, Rick? Sorry, sorry about this. I'm not... I'm not ignoring... Record. This is getting a bit slop, sloppy, no, you know? No, 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 no. No, it is, Rick. It's getting is sloppy. It? It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here, because we went to um, this award ceremony in the week. Um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, yeah. let me, I have to explain it to Carl, because uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the, it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Annual Awards, right? We've it's never heard of it either. We've never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio uh, industry club. Right. That's why yeah, that's the clue, isn't it? So, um, but uh, we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing, and they really made an effort, and it was really nice. Food was brilliant. It was at the Grosvenor House Hotel. Really nice do, and, you know, lots of industry people in that there. It was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours. Before we had fun. to sit down. And, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal. It was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream. I mean, literally the cream. Big names, you know. Uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know. Came in, like, big TV, radio, industry names, on-screen talent, behind-the-scenes people. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um, Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right? Anyway, so it, it, the, the voice comes on and says, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman. of The president. The, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards. And we had to stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation, as he walked to his table, to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out, he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like, straight away, it was, you know, old school stuff. You want to like, thank the ladies, because, you know, it was nothing without the ladies, all the lovely ladies here. And we're waiting for a joke. No. Nope. Just, th <laughs> just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we right. ate. It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little um, disabled fella, right? And he's, he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're standing up. Oh, no, can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, and um, <laughs> sorry, did we bore you? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, you just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who yeah. was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said blah blah blah, and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, "What's happened to you?" They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So yeah. Oh. You're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> so go on. And uh, Tom O'Connor, he said. Uh, uh, Thank you, God, for... We thought this was a joke initially. We thought it was going to be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's, why we, that's why we were laughing out loud. <laughs> that's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> <laughs> we went anyway. And then he went, I thank you, God, for this. Uh, and, uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went, what about those that don't walk at all? He said, I've never been, I've never been left out of grace before. <laughs> so, but we had to, and we had to have kind of like bowed our heads slightly, you know. And uh, did we say amen? I know that we were sort of, a lot of people did. I'm pretty sure Cliff, I, I think, probably ch chimed in there. Yeah, and he sang um, it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so but before again, you see what he's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage, this guy walks up there. I don't know who he is. Says. There's a lot of people here this city this afternoon, you know, it's a wonderful uh, event. But of course, there's a load of celebrities as well. He said, thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up. And then he went... Table 77. Mr. Russ Abbott. And we all round of applause. We, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. Um, actually, brilliant. he looked like, uh, a bit like um, uh, Barrett Holmes. the hilarious <laughs> Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went, table 107. The cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We like to clap. 
And then he went, <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. Clap. Slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, well, when is this going to... Uh, he went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, a hundred. Table 53, John Inman, everyone. It's John Inman, right, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, table 70, Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo. Yeah, there was there was booing yeah. there, and yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a joke, ironic booing, I think. Could the cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> we didn't I see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show when they went up. They won an award, Cowell and uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, forty-three. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we we kind of legged it upstairs and were watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> and and it was yes. Empty. Empty. <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right? Because Sir Cliff was giving out the um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right? He gets up, he uses this speech, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend. Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford, right? We immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I don't know what it is she's done, I Gloria Hunniford. I don't know what she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done Radio 2, so I don't think that's well, not anymore. Well, we're not dissing no, anyone. Good luck we're not you. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know. Uh, but anyway, it was she... just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad-lib a speech, right? And I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, Actually, she's been there for a long time. Yeah, it's, and it's like I was thought she was going. She doesn't call. You yeah. do that. You get a blue Peter, and this is how she. <laughs> we thought she was going to get award. photos out, maybe start showing it. it no, was it was very. It was a nice bizarre. event, and uh, you know, everyone there. Henry Cooper was there. So Henry Cooper. <laughs> it was so good because every was... single element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu. I've got the program here, and the menu, right? The pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, uh, when everyone was doing the prayers, did you did you look at them with their eyes shut, <laughs> like, like you did at school? What do you mean? Well, what, when you had did to you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like you'd do that. You'd do your um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Didn't you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> Table 60, Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> That's a uh, corner shop, lessons learned from Rocky 1 to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's mm. great, it's real glam rocky. That's T Rex and Bowie. I was going to play some up from uh, Ziggy Stardust today, but instead I bought in a different album. I want to play a bit of Bowie. Is that mm. alright? Oh, of course, yeah, always. Yeah, always. Bit of Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we, uh, uh, with the education of Carl, last week he did um, uh, Che Guevara. He did very, very well. well. Yeah. Before that, the week before that, he learned all about Russ Butin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm -hmm. How does that go? Do you, how do you reckon that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. So, um, mm -hmm. They're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, things aren't going well, and they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. But I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can... I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara... It's the same sort of thing. thing. Che Guevara, when he was a kid, yeah. had like asthma. Yeah. Right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he um, he only had one ball. Well, I was I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah. Seriously, he phoned me up in the week. I said, "How's it going?" He went, "I've skimmed it. I've just skimmed it. I was looking for the uh, the testicle thing." Now I don't know if they left that out or it's not true. Right. So <laughs> he was he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up, <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you, look, did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles. <laughs> testicles absence of. Just sort of skim through. Cause <laughs> one of. It, yeah. it, mother, mother, brackets, <laughs> other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in, in like, when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on. And somebody had put a bag in a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yes. Yeah, and but I'm the table well, it was under the him. table. Yeah, but what you wondering if it blew a testicle? It was. It was. The, what the testicle was under the table? No, the like, bag. The bag blew off the ball. No, the ball thing. sack was probably hanging below the uh, protective top, and so that's where he could have lost. But why would he have only just lost the one? Uh, because the, the way he was sitting, <laughs> cross-legged or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, again, again. If, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert phoned up. Maybe they could. Uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could uh, maybe phone up and confirm the uh, the testicle uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. What's the number again, Carl? Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. You need to have at least I, I, a PhD I, I, or something. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm no. talking about someone who's done a study of him and who's done a PhD. Oh, okay. I'm not talking All about right. any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it, and I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no. Even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on more on the right lines there. <laughs> is there is anyone who um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A level maths that can bear? Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks, I was trying to, I, I know I was tr uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is, th the, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but then any other individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. You, I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to combine... It's not, Carl. If there's a, a problem... Well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it, it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number of combinations that have never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up have happened, and they're just as likely or unlikely as any other combination, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that you feel intuitively, right, that one, two, three, four, five, six are, is less likely than one, seven, twelve, thirty-four, sixty. You know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. <laughs> Play record. Okay. <laughs> Wu Tang Clan, Uzi, on XFM 104.9. Well, here we are, the day before St. Patrick's Day. Oh, hooray! Brilliant! Guinness, etc. Oh, I hate people, I hate British English people, I should say, who are obsessed with celebrating St. Patrick's Day. You know, all crazy, it's like Chris Evans used to rave on about it. We're going to Dublin, we're going to get drunk, wow. It's like, it means nothing I to I think English XFM people, just did that, to be well, honest. Well, yeah, exactly. Just as bad. Careful, bang. careful, they are our employers. You don't want to. You don't want to annoy him. What? What would we do without this? <laughs> well, that's true. I yeah, have an enjoyable Saturday. No, this is my favourite two hours. You like this, don't you? Well, I don't know. We're not. We can't do this through May and June. No, we'll be gone. We've got. To be, we've got to record the second series of The Office. What are we going to do, Carl? What are you going to do on a Saturday? Host a show yourself. Do not me on. Yeah. You. You are not. Are you seriously thinking of it? If they ask you, do everything. You. Why? Why would you not think about it? Because I've, I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Next challenge, please. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh dear! Do you know what? Do you know what? What St Patrick did? Why he was revered as a saint and everything? What was he famous for in Ireland? He did. He rid Ireland of something. I don't know, but I bet he started off with something odd happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> what you think he had asthma or something as a kid? <laughs> they, all, they all do. Uh, and he took it out on what though? What did he do? exactly? He took it out on something. What did he do? What did he rid Ireland of? Uh. St. Patrick. St. Patrick. This is why we're going to get crazy and drunk tomorrow. This is why we're all so happy to celebrate his uh, anniversary or whatever it is yes. we're celebrating. This is that's why, why we. Well, that's why we have a crack. Yeah, this is why we don't bother to celebrate, you know, the birthdays of James Joyce, you know, one of the great novelists of this century, or Samuel Beckett, one of the great playwrights. We actually celebrate this man, St. Patrick, the man oh, who did I don't, what. Oh, don't diss him. He, he did a good job of it as well, because there's none there now. There are none of these in Ireland. So. Mm. He rid Ireland of something. Come on, Carl. Think of something. Just give us an answer. What's he the went round on a horse whacking them and He went on a horse whacking them. Yeah. yeah. What was it, Carl? What did he rid Ireland of? Went on a horse. Foxes. I don't well, know. Well, no, you're no, on the right lines. On the right lines. Um It was an animal. Oh Bears. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes it, it was. Yes it was bears. <laughs> wow. It was snakes. Right. And there are no snakes. No he either. rid Ireland of all the snakes. Yeah. Who did it here then? Because there isn't that many. <coughs> well, I think he, he had a he had a stab at over here as well, but got tired and went back. Yeah. That's why there's it's, just a few snakes here. Is, is it true that there are no snakes in Ireland? I think it is. I think if, if someone called it. And what is there? Is there any historical evidence for Saint Patrick ridding them of? I mean, how did he do it? Was it like the Pied Piper? See, I, I I'm not convinced that. He did go round killing snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think he's now. If someone knows he's now, we were someone just. Uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths.
graduates confirming that indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls. Which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, but coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done Rasputin, he's done Che Guevara. Plus, of course, uh, White Van Carl, where we White asked Van Carl, Carl some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learn as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there. Yeah. That was thrown in for free. That was an extra... I'll, I'll learn you something here. Snakes. Well, yeah. I'll, sorry, I'll just stop you there, and I'll teach you something. Right? Oh, go on, then. You don't learn someone something. You teach them something. Yeah. It's it's not tra it, it, it one's passive. You you, you, know you learn, you? Ricky. I'm or, sorry, mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. Snake. It's like it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly, because there's so many errors that you're making. It's like where to start with you? <sighs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes. Yeah. For s a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a it's like a. <laughs> familiar type thing that's not, that happens to snakes. Okay, yeah. Them. They take it for granted, don't they? Right. Snakes born two heads, they'll fight each other for food, even though it's going in the same body. Isn't that weird? Mm. Were there kids at school that you went <laughs> with who <laughs> had two heads? The snake that? twins yeah. from Mosley. Oh, was, it, was, it, was there, there was kids at your school with two heads, was that right? What? No, no, they had, they big, had heads. big heads. Oh, they had big heads. And webbed hands, but they right. weren't related. And yeah. they, they weren't friends, because that would have been too obvious, yeah. he said. Yeah. Oh, oh, Steve, listen, before you came in, right, I sneezed a couple of times. I don't know if I'm allergic to them, I've still got a bit of a cold. And I said, oh, oh God, he went, he went, bloody hell, I was like, sorry. And he went, and he went, you know you can't sneeze with your eyes open? I went, yeah. Yeah, and then he was obviously thinking to himself still, and after a pause he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I started laughing, he went, no, because that, has anyone ever done that, do you think? <laughs> has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then, and then he went, uh, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> Your song here, Ricky. Oh, this, uh, yeah, uh, um, Bowie, Sorrow, beautiful. <laughs> Sorrow by David Bowie. Uh, I've got that on a compilation today, but I, I think it's off originally off uh, the Pin Ups album, the one we did all the covers, because he didn't write that, did he? Uh, the, the, that was the one with um, him and Twiggy on the front cover, isn't it? Right. I haven't had that for ages. I haven't got that. So uh, sorry, you lost me. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you reading a book there? No, I was just reading the um, the uh, brochure there, the uh, program, if you will, for the uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we we, we lost. Mm. Uh, we we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. The best comedy. But uh, you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 when his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I noticed it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't, we've got to say by surprise from behind. But, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn, Follow Me, I'm Right Behind You, and Eat Like a Horse, Drink Like a Fish. Does it but, mention Celebrity Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did, um, the Crosswits. name that tune. Crosswits. Once, right? Um, I was. Well, it's uh, Crosswits. Do you remember Crosswits? It, it was, was the, from the 80s. It was like a crossword game oh, show. It was yeah. often with um, Kate Copstick. But <laughs> I saw one, right? It was on. The, it was on Challenge uh, TV. Being repeated. And no, Andy Crane. Remember Andy Crane? Yeah. He was on the. He was the uh, link man, and he went coming up next. Uh, Tom O'Connor with uh, uh, Crosswits. With uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best Crosswits players of all time, John Junkin. <laughs> 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 Favorite Crosswits player? Uh, it's got to be Junkin for me as well. But Copstick was Barry all right. Cryer's bloody good. Though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff um, uh, in the week. Is this with Toxic and uh, yeah, Colin? Yeah, it was. It was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I imagine you could get on there if you want. I used to watch it with um, what's his name? Frank Muir. <laughs> yeah, Frank Muir. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was great. You're impressive. a brilliant impression because obviously I, while Bowie was playing, you were doing your infamous Bowie impression, which is the best one you do actually. Well, that's just because Carl said 
you know what? He said, I'd love to go out for a drink with David Bowie. Of all the people that come in here for sessions, I think he's really good him. And I said, I think he'd like you as well. That's all. And I just went, hello, Carl. You're strange. You're alien. It interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on them. Yeah, I just imagine you and Bowie in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> but not on air. On air, he's sort of like this sort of eloquent 40-year-old capital DJ. Yeah. And but uh, when you talk to him in the studio, in, he's, he's slowly like turning. Legend. He's st slowly turning into uh, Tommy Vance, isn't he? Mm. This is one of his pillars of rock. Canfield. He loves Vance, <laughs> Lemmy, uh, Diano. If we uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is you know, likely, yeah, uh, considering we're, we're now talking about no, Ian we ran out of it at <laughs> five past one. Exactly. But could we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie? Yeah, a sort of humorous sketch. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if like David Bowie was you know a cab driver. What well, would he say? What was well, some of the funny that, things he would we say? We saw that, um, that, what was that in when it said, uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what, uh, it, it would did sound you see like... This, Dead Ringers is this impressionist show they did, a, it's on Radio 4 and they did a TV version. Yeah, I saw that. What did you make of it? I didn't like it. It was alright, no, it was just that the write-up in, uh, the Radio what Times, magazine, I think it was. The Radio Times said, uh, ever wondered what it would be like if, uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby? Or, what would it be like if, uh, there was an animal was, hospital... was, was hosted by, uh, Anne Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, do you know, I have. I have wondered. Was it, were those two sketches on there last night? Yeah. Yeah. What were yeah. they like? You are, you are the weakest... You are the weakest dog skink. or something? <laughs> no, what was it? It was something like... The, 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 they had to vote off an animal to die or something. It was something like that, yeah. It was this is right. flagging. Quick, do your Bowie again. Um, oh, come in here. Look, it's Tim Machine. Now let's play Changes. Hello, Iggy Pop, you nutter. Stop cutting your sound. <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9, two o'clock, halfway through. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? My it, favourite time of the week where we come in here and uh, play some records, have a chat. Ricky, a lot of people are wondering who you are. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hi. And there's little Carl over there. Uh -huh. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. Noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. Don't want to <laughs> yeah. What's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, oh. For those that don't no, I'm not familiar with this feature. Basically, uh, the Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of every every men and women their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week, not like um, us to rip off another idea and just no, use no, it for no, our own. No, 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 no. No, but this time, the yeah. white van man in the Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow in Middlesex. Um, Herbie, and he's been asked, he's asked asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay? Come um, on, Carl. It's... I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right... And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now... And her kids You're not going to tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's you know... A, a leather, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say right. That's it. I'm taking kids in America back to the shop. I'm disgusted. Sure, I liked her. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever going to like meet her and, and marry her and that. So what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, she's a good voice. He's gay. You know, a lot of gay people in the world. Georgie boy was gay. I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So no Do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Killing a Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, that's what you're saying. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, try and get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy helmets anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
They want flat caps. They feel that their um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted. They get a lot of bad press. They're not being paid. Well. They they're under exactly resourced. They, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think somewhere. they may have done yeah, yet. It was, it was, well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. they're, go they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at, they That's were looking I, for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did a Sherman tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? What, you concerned? What, what are the signs? <coughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe. She'll be all right. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it. I don't even think about it now. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over Zoe? Zoe Harris. How long did it take <laughs> you? To be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends, and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I a good reason that, to call that. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her. And then the <laughs> bit that really got me, I thought I half liked her. And then I remember, right, we were at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, it's on the cusp. Uh, yeah. Right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And um, she was crying. Because you were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh well, was she? Had you she stolen been, her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You, <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap? I just think of him he's like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald, going, for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it because all the mates were saying, come on, Carl, she's upset. And I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Hold on, though. Wait a minute. What do you mean all the mates were saying, look, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying. Help her out. And, like, and you did nothing? I don't know. She's got not injured. <laughs> Got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset and you were her boyfriend. Well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. That's why it didn't work out, he said. I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings? Current, his current yeah. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, she didn't. So as far as she? you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, if she's going to make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole, screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and given her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we I were, would. We were playing dead arm. <laughs> In the I was giving another oh, question. Okay, very final oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should papers be allowed to print tittle-tattle about celebrities, oh, this is providing it's proven true. Oh, this, this is something about, isn't it a Division One football or something? It's definitely had a, a, a premiership football, it's unfair. And it is true, but he's trying to keep privacy. And the judge said, well, it's not for us to censor the press over things that are true. Right. It's up to the general public to either boycott or not, you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it, but... No. People are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has to go at Beckham for not being that bright. But at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. Doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, but what if you were a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. Yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah. I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I won't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like kind of head butting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it it was with do. people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Nah. Alright. Oh, and the mates. 
Right. So okay. you were playing Dead Arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. And you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, well, dear. what track we got here? You've got a track Yes, history. I just thought I'd dig out some old uh, Elliot Smith. Uh, I've quite enjoyed his work. And this was a previous single and uh, the first track from his album Figure Eight, Son of Sam. XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was going to uh, back announce that track and just mention it was uh, Elliot Smith and his track Son of Sam. Well, I think I'd just better ask um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can, uh, we can you know, get on with our lives. Okay, <laughs> we can take that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that uh, old, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Put okay, that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's, we, it's, it's week three of his education. We've, you've nailed Rasputin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I'll, I'll maybe um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, keep your your mind on it. But Hitler, what, tell what us the story. What have you learned? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up in a minute. What you, th what, what I do you think? Can't do it in a minute. <laughs> well, uh, can I ask some questions then? Uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. Um, <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what in his early life? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He, what's her name? His his um his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> He's going. Yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez, There's no cool. need for that. There Go was on. Uh, there was there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including uh, him and his sister, survived. The others died at an early age. Okay. Right. right. Um, anyway, so they grew up, and um, the mum died, and the dad died, and that, and he thought, oh, what am I going to do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right, and then, um, so he said, right, I'm going to go to Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff, and didn't like him so he went to munich and um he uh, joined the army right yeah yeah and um he was in the army and he got injured right so he went to hospital and whilst he was in hospital uh the w world war one ended and he was like oh god i want to i was join that yeah well, you know <laughs> so <laughs> Don't, because you're breaking the concentration. Yeah, sorry. sorry. I, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right, go on. Right, so... Um, so he was in hospital. He was in hospital. It gets a bit better. He's never that fit, though. He's one of these blokes who was always ill. Uh, that was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. Right. Um God, you know, I knew it all this morning. <laughs> I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going. I'm, I'm not nailed in the fact, am I? And joined a, another army, and he was. Well, he's, he's, listen, let's try and help you. So here's a good bit. Here's a good bit. I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. All right. Right. So it's like, um, <laughs> you know, you you fight for nine months, and at the end of it, you own something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um. He, he goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, you know, he's he's, uh, he's fighting his way through, like, you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does, uh, does he do Berlin? Does he? <laughs> Sorry, wait a minute. Is, is he, is he, uh, <laughs> is he Chancellor yet? Um, what year is it? 35? So let's, where, skip, where are you? let's skip the kind of climb to power then. He's now, he's now, he's now the dictator of Germany. Right, he's in yeah. charge, yeah. And this is when, you know, he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's, he's, uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and, and all this. And uh, anyway, cut a long story short. He, uh, Please do. He, uh, when he came to, like, f fighting Britain, yeah, came a bit sort of unst unstuck. Yeah. Right? Started fighting Not back. so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. Yeah. So, well, oh, God. So a bit goes, late, but yeah, go he, go, he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like, 
Germany sort of surrenders. Yeah. Says it's all over, forget it, we can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this. He thought, oh, I can't, I can't show my face around here. <laughs> so he... Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's, he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife, right. Eva, in this bunker. Yeah. And um, so uh, so he said, oh, I've had enough of this. He shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> she poisons herself. And the chauffeur buries them or something, or burns them. Right. And uh, in all the time he was in charge, 50 million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between it felt like that. Between, <laughs> between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers next right. week. That's fantastic. That's remarkable. <laughs> I have to say that you, you, you sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line because you started off confidently, but it's you lost your I've had a really busy week, and last night I was like whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning I woke up, and you know, Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy, I've been busy. First thing I say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you are romantic. Oh, oh, oh. That's great. That's how stressful it's getting. But I knew it all this morning, honestly. No, but that's, that's fine. I think you've summed up the, you know, you've done that. You've right, just, just for a bit of balance, um, I've got your next week's um, homework. It's the same same series. There's little books. There's tiny little books. Just three inches long by two inches wide. Crammed with so much information. Though. Winston Churchill. There you go. You'll enjoy that. Yeah. I, I'm getting a bit bored now, though. This is what happened in school. Bigger the listeners. Did really well in infants. Once got to secondary, lost interest. Was it the breakup between <laughs> you and Harris <laughs> and Zoe? The, 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 well, I'm wondering if yeah, you've spiralled into something there. Yeah, because it, it's, it's like all these other. You know, these men, these men of history, they always had sort of things happen in their early childhood, didn't they? Maybe yeah. yours is the Zoe Harris um, dress yeah. incident. Well, let's just refer to it as the Zoe incident. Yeah. From now on. Yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill, the better left out in the Hitler story. Hitler was scared of this man. Yeah. And I can tell you something else about Winston Churchill. Go on. Um, he said he can remember being in the womb. <laughs> and he was born in a public toilet. <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> <laughs>Called me in the week, Steve. I know. Yes. I'm, I know we sort of ban each other from speaking to him. Well, you seem to have just disobeyed that rule. I, I can't believe it. I just can't resist it. But um, he said, uh, "Oh, just saw a program." He said, "What's that big balloon that blew up?" And the newsreader was going all mental. And I went, "Is that the, the Hindenburg?" He went, "Yeah." Oh, I said it was a, a big zeppelin. He went, "Yeah." He went, "What happened?" I said, I said, "He said it was helium, wasn't it?" And I went, "Yeah." I said it was a big, just a huge zeppelin full of helium. And what caused us? I don't know. It could be a spark or anything, but of course it just goes because it's helium so flammable. And he went, "Now they didn't show this in the documentary, but did all their voices go funny?" <laughs> <laughs> and I went, "What?" He went, "Well, no. Even if you take a little bit of a little balloon of helium, your voice goes funny. So if that was like millions of gallons of it, and it blew up in the air, and you were, and it was in the atmosphere." <laughs> You'd be carrying. You'd be talking like Donald Duck. He went. So imagine that. God. And, they, and but I, what I liked about it, I said this wasn't in the documentary. No, no it's an oversight. Maybe just time was against him. They didn't have time to explain. Just that like that, but that, that book about Hitler didn't have his one ball incident. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's annoyed me that. What? What is? The old Hitler book. Why? Just, just because I, I knew it all. Do you know what I mean? I was cycling in today. I was like, yeah. It going through it all again. Yeah. Had it all in my head. But that's why you should know something as opposed to just cram and have a piece of trivia that's, that's pre precariously sort of teetering on the edge. But what I don't understand you know what I mean? It's, it's, you, it's, it's, well, you're not interested by it. That's it's what I mean. It's one of the most you know, fascinating things. I you am, you know all about things you're interested in. You never forget them, do you? You know? Yeah, I, I was a bit interested in it, but like I say, I mean, I'm cramming all this in, in into a, a normal week. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. You go on and... You know, you watch telly and that in the week, you've got loads of leisurely time. I'm sort of using the only little bit of rest time I have to learn, as well as try to do all my other stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said, he texted me yesterday about Hitler. He went, he went, stop making me read this heavy shit. He said, I've seen in the back of this book, there's one on Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is, it is interesting, but not when you have to read it, do you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's but do you think you'd have read time. it in your leisure time? To be honest... No, you wouldn't. No, have, would you? I wouldn't, I wouldn't. no he's what not do you do in your leisure time? Um, I like, you know, going f out for food and that. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. for foraging. What do you mean going out yeah. for food? They like, can have a little yeah. hole and go, <laughs> go hunting. Mm. Yeah. This is Carl. He's hungry. He knows he has to get to the greasy spoon by 11. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Many of he... Carl's close friends have never made it across this road. <laughs> there was a zebra crossing installed just for the safety of Carl. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, can I have a bacon body into... Carl is enjoying his... Wow. <laughs> but he has to get back. <laughs> his girlfriend's asked for one as well. <laughs> She's home with a PlayStation 2. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, Rick. It was David Bowie impressions earlier. Now it's just a selection of crazy sound effects, like that guy in you Police you Academy. Some. You said you wanted some. He hasn't got time to make them up. He's reading about Hitler. You heard him. Do a machine we've, gun or a helicopter. We've, we've, got, we've got to do all our own sound effects. <laughs> oh. So do you, want to, do you want a week off? Do you not want to learn about Winston Churchill? Why don't you read it if you want to, and just, you know, if, you, if you get interested, then read on. I think that's... Because that's what I did with school, and it didn't work. <laughs> no, you decided you didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... But hasn't that, hasn't that taught you something? Can't we just do it like a TV series? It doesn't go on forever. We've done three weeks. Give it a rest now for, the, for like, the summer. Yeah, because most series last for three weeks. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah. Okay. What, what's your favourite subject in the world? What's your favourite thing in the world? Um... I would have said, um, what, at school, like? No, just, just in, in, in life. life. What's, what are you interested I in? Like, I like little interesting bits, like... <laughs> Um, <laughs> Sentences. Atlantic Ocean. It's got 17 quadri quadrillion gallons of water in it. Right. Well, that's that's interesting without having to read a book. Well, why is that interesting, though? What what are you basing that on? What, what, when, you, when you think of 17 quadrillion, it's a lot, what, isn't it? what are you imagining? Just like a big wave. Imagine <laughs> how much water. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's your subject, then? I don't know. No, it's just that that Wilson was your favourite subject. You gave me a fact <laughs> that is so. No, but that, that sort of thing. Like I said to you before, you were talking about monkeys, and I said, do you know that if you give a monkey a childbirth tablet, it works on it the same way because it's it's kitted out the same. Could I just say something? We weren't talking about monkeys. What were we talking about? then? No, we were talking about something completely different. And you went, if you give a monkey a childbirth pill, it works. That's what you said. No, we were talking about monkeys. We were. We were talking about sneezing. Yeah. Yeah, and you went, if you give a monkey childbirth pills, it works. That's, that's, that's... Well, we're yeah, well, we're talking about interesting things about sneezing, and I remembered an interesting fact about monkeys. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway, um, half past two, brilliant. Um, oh. What did happen to that bloke who used to make the same effects in Police Academy? I don't know. He was brilliant, wasn't he? Do you remember him? I don't remember was him. Was he called Hightower? Yeah, he was good. Yeah? If anyone knows, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> God. Blur. <laughs> Girls and boys. Um, you've embarrassed yourself then, Gervais. What? Well, we've had a number of calls and emails yeah. pointing out that the Hindenburg disaster was not because the Zeppelin was filled with helium, Hydrogen. But filled with hydrogen. Right, OK. Well, I thought about that when he told me in the well, week. Yeah, but, but I assumed he must have got that off from the do documentary. So it just it just went up. So that's, that's probably why the, the voices didn't go That funny. was probably why it didn't feature in the documentary. Yeah. But it seems to me we should have thought of that. I mean, like, it's school fates and stuff where they're, like, filling little balloons with helium. Yeah. You know, there'd be all kinds of horror stories if they were just, you know, just blowing up, you know, left, right and centre. I don't think you can just blow helium up like that, can you? What? Isn't that the point? What well, I'm saying is it's not. It's, it can't be as potentially lethal as hydrogen, helium. What hydrogen isn't as bad as helium? No, helium's not as bad as hydrogen. I don't know what you're saying because that, that Hindenburg was hydrogen. Yeah, and I'm saying why did we think it was helium? That's crazy. You go to fates, school fates and stuff with like little kids, and they're filling up little balloons with helium. They wouldn't have big canisters of helium, you know, a, a charity event or a you know a small kind of bring and buy sale if it was deadly. Yeah, but it's not as big. I mean, when you buy those balloons at a fair, it's not as big as that. Uh, that that. Big but presumably, balloons. it's still flammable, is it? But it was. It wasn't the fact how dangerous the the rare gas was, or that uh, it was the fact that um, it was made of this thing that caught fire and just went. There was nothing. A hole in it would have been as bad. It just it just burnt quickly and fell to the ground because the hydrogen or helium escaped. It wasn't. It was irrelevant that what what the gas was, wasn't it? I thought it was that there was supposed to be some kind of explosion. 
Well, I don't know what it was, but the point is because the outer thing was so thin, right? The the gas inside escaped and it fell to the so ground. So it just fell to the ground like one of the, like when you popped a balloon. Mm -hmm. Well, not not not. It didn't quite. sort of go. <laughs> it didn't like flap all over no. the place and make a zany noise. But I tell you what, because when I was looking on the internet in the week for it, I was like trying to get a bit more info on it. Guess how many balloons it would take <laughs> helium balloons to lift a human up. <laughs> Go on. Six thousand. Should we do it? What? Brilliant. Next week, that's got to be a challenge. Can we, can we, is, if, is there a sort of balloon company or, or, or some sort of, you know, uh, party company that are willing to sponsor us to lift Carl <laughs> into the air right. with helium balloons? Ten feet off the ground, where we're tethering him down, right? Is there someone willing to pay for 6,000 balloons to try and lift We can maybe up? get some kind of company to sponsor it. I'm thinking like Electrolux, if they're going to sponsor puddings. If they're going to sponsor puddings, uh, you know, and uh, 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 celebrities, Russ Abbott, they will sponsor Carl being lift. Heat magazine, Heat magazine, come on. They're a big selling, very successful magazine there. And they know about Carl because they've mentioned him. Heat magazine, can we have a heat balloon? Yeah. Oh, six thousand is an awful into lot. Into the air, six. Th yeah, it's the heat. Six thousand, Carl challenge. Lift Carl ten feet into the air. Yeah. Come on. What about if it was Carl and Doctor Fox? We could get two different balloons. I think we need a lot more than six thousand. A lot more for Fox, to, isn't it? Mix. Yeah. <laughs> Explain what I'm laughing at. Right? Um, we just had a call um, from someone saying his company would sponsor Carl, right, to be raised by all these balloons if he could have a walk-on part in the office. And uh, uh, we immediately went, "Oh, we're worried about that sort of thing. You can't really promise that artistic." You know? And I was worried about the legality of it as well. How can you promise someone that for personal gain? That's a private and all that sort of stuff, right? And I went, "Oh, I don't know." In any way, put the phone down to him, and Carl went. <laughs> I love the fact you're more effing worried about that than me being raised 30 feet in the effing air. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you started getting scared, did you? Are you worried about it? Well, you're quite excited about the idea of the challenge, though, aren't you? I like the idea, but I want, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like the idea, Carl? Oh, what if it went all wrong and we're there going, oh, the humanity of it. I think we need Carl to get... Carl is just... He's just... And the, and the rope would pull out my trousers and... Punch <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it's definitely got to be Dr. Fox if that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, we've got to do this. So, oh, hang on, but let's just no. think about the... Because, wait a minute, before, I mean, we say this, but we'd have to get all kinds of health and safety people involved. No, we, no, we wouldn't. Of course we can't <laughs> just start raising you in the air. No, you're allowed to do it on private land, aren't you? Not what happened to the Hindenburg. No, but that was... There was I was going to say, there was lots of people died. <laughs> Listen, look, all we do is we get, all, we get someone, right? But what if what if he go, he gets loose and he just floats off into the air? <laughs> and he meets his magpie that he lost. He yeah. used to oh, peck his grifter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I'm so excited about this. Listen, we've got to do this. No, but Please. Just have a minute. Let's no. just stop and think about it. It's right. 60,000 balloons. balloons. No, no it's, it's not. It's 6,000. 6, 6, but 6,000 balloons? That's a lot of balloons. No, it's not. No, no, oh, it's don't not. Be silly. For sponsorship, people pay for uh, No, listen, it's worth it. There must be a company out there that are paying for this just so we can film Hang it. Hang on, is there not an easier way of just getting <laughs> one big balloon? Then the, the challenge is no. there's no challenge there. No, it's yeah, got to be. It's got our people coming up and hooking balloons. It'd be like Buckaroo. And the person who puts the balloon that actually raises him 10 feet wins a prize or something so hang no. on so what we've got we've got each person with like oh. 500 balloons yeah that's mad you can you can imagine how many balloons that is that's ludicrous Six thousand. yeah that's an awful lot of balloons i don't know you what we there must be someone that, that that could do this oh look people have walked on the moon for christ's sake we can raise carl pilkington with some balloons yes but they had a nasa budget we've got xfm behind us yeah, but balloons, <laughs> yeah. balloons are cheap you can get about a pack of 25 for about 150. <laughs> right, fine. <laughs> no, True. Yeah, the helium though, Carl. You can't just, like, attach yourself to a pack of balloons. No, but... What, oh, you think we blow them all up? With helium. Right. Oh. Off you go. But then we can do something with the balloons, can't we? Like, release them afterwards. <laughs> oh, we'll release them back into the wild. <laughs> Brilliant. As a sign of peace. <laughs>
<laughs> fly, I, my British, fly. Listen, be free. I am so excited. I have not been so excited about and, and when I thought that Robin Ince was going to stay in my cupboard for a thousand pounds. Look, we've got to, we've got to do 6, this. Six thousand balloons. I don't think it's going to happen. That's an awful lot of balloons, and I just don't oh. think I don't see how we can tether them all to Carl. He's a small man. No, but because you're about different lengths, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Carl knows. Can you uh, think about the logistics of this? Oh, someone must know. There must be a couple of, there's a bloke willing to do it. I know, I know he doesn't know the technology of it, he's willing to sort of stand by. And, and so the company just on, has we, access to helium like that. But we can do this, come on. London. And someone's done Londoners. It, it was on the internet already, so someone obviously has done it. Yeah. So they didn't say, oh, we can't get all the balloons. No, they probably worked it out, didn't they? Must I can't, Carl, you're uh -huh. more excited about this than anything else, about your education, about your exam Why results. Just so exciting. exciting. And, we'll, and we'll have a little rope, it'll be like flying a little kite, a little Carl. We're like, let's go fly. Carl, what will you wear, like a one-piece jumpsuit? Yeah, I mean, that'd with be sponsorship all over it. Oh, it'd be yeah. great. You're like Jackie Stewart, and just as you go up your little face, oh my god, I'm not going to sleep until this is done. This is the most exciting thing ever. Only ten feet. Ten feet, yeah. And we need some. We need some kind of rope to sort of tether you to the ground. Yeah. We don't want you sort of flying <laughs> this off. This is going to be great. And he'd have a little crash helmet and everything, and little Dee Dee boppers on the crash helmet, like yeah. he's a little flying ant. Definitely, definitely. We give him a little. Oh my god, can we give you an outfit like little wings and everything? Can we oh. paint your face with like children's no, paint? I'm not yeah. Doing all that. Why? Oh, because yeah, no, that'll be silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, Carl, do this. Do it. We we'll do it for charity. We we'll do it for charity. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is. We we'll do it for brilliant. children in need. Please, just phone in if you got if you can help us lift Carl up thirty feet. Let's say thirty. I think feet. it has to be a decent. Yeah, yeah, it has to be a decent. What height. is there a world record? Because we want to break that. If we're yeah, we want to break that. What is the world record for raising a man by balloons? Yeah. Okay, oh. so listen, let's just, let's just finalise details oh. here. We've got an uh, so email address, ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number? The number, Carl? 0870 oh, 100 okay. Lift, Carl. Give it again. Lift, Carl. 0870 oh, 100 Sponsored by Heat Magazine and or you, something Maybe like. even if you've just got an idea about how we might be able to organise it, how we might be able to get it done, if you've got contacts, anything, just get in touch, give us some information. Oh, oh, that'd be great. I'm going to play a Beatles track for song for... For the lovers, oh man, it's uh, it's off the Help album, and it's um, you've got to hide your love away. Oh, just think of his little face as he goes. Oh. Can you tell me about this? Well, XFM, we're near the end of the show. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. We've enjoyed your company. Carl, we're going to try and get Carl in the air. Anyone that can help us, take him up with helium balloons. Um, our friend Johnny Mango called again. And uh, apparently the record's 11,000 feet. Carl is getting a little bit nervous. Yeah, the, the world record is 11,631 feet raised by hot air balloons. How, yeah. how tall is uh, Canary Wharf? It's 11,631 feet. Exactly. What's I don't know, Carl. Is it how much higher? It's a long way. A lot, a, a more. Yeah, because I'm, I'm like six foot something. Yeah, think of that. Just look at Steve. All right. Yeah. But you can change your record. You could say, well... The sort of balloons are the one with, with Mickey Mouse on it or something. Yeah, could I just could I just say something? That man did eleven thousand feet, but he wasn't naked. <laughs> All right. Come on, Carl. You be the your thirty feet will be the world record for naked ballooning. Yeah. Mm. Think about it. All right. It's for charity. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. We are going to raise Carl. We are going to raise Carl. And after after Carl said, and just to think, my teacher said I'd never be a high flyer. So this is your chance, Carl. To shine, to fly. Steve. It'll be brilliant. Uh, this is a final song for the ladies. Spell and Sebastian, we've not heard uh, them for oh. a while. This is from, um, it's actually a B-side or a triple side or whatever you call it. Um, track three on a single called Jonathan David. This is the beautiful The Loneliness of the Middle Distance Runner. Play Goodbye. <laughs>